In the last video that we shared with you, we took you along with us as we had a tour at this most amazing place, Finca Rosa Blanca. It is in a permaculture farm that grows coffee organically and it's so neat to see how they have the coffee grown in this permaculture system so if you haven't seen that video make sure you check it out but there's so much there that we had to do another video about our time there in this video we're going to share with you the rest of the tour as well as some other stuff that we got to do while we were there mm -hmm. and while mike and sailor were on the tour Josiah and Micah and I, we stayed back at the resort because on the way there, Josiah really wasn't feeling well and had a headache. So we just kind of hung back. But as soon as they left, he started feeling better and we kind of toured around the resort and got to see all different kinds of plants and animals. And it was a good thing that you stayed back because Josiah having a headache and us having to hike where we did with our walking sticks, he would not have liked it at all. So as our tour with Ulysses continued, the next part that he talked about was how they process the coffee. And they harvest and process the coffee all within the same day. And the harvest season for coffee is from November to January. And when they harvest the coffee, they go through and just select all the right ones off the branches, leaving the green ones there, and then they'll later come back and get those once they have ripened. And as they're harvesting, they have these huge baskets strapped onto them. And you know what? Some time ago at another farm, you were able to try on one of those baskets. How did you like that? How did that yeah, feel? It, it was super cool getting to really experience like what it feels like. I'm gonna do exactly the same. Like if these were all red, it would be easy to grab them all. And, but if you had to pick and choose each one, it would definitely take a lot longer. Although my basket was not full, which they say can weigh up to 50 pounds, um, I can definitely tell you it would not be easy to walk around with a 50 pound basket like right in front of you. But it was a really neat experience. And on the days that they harvest and process the coffee, they start the harvesting about 6 a.m. in the morning to about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And then they begin the processing. And they use a process called wet milling process or wash coffee to take off the outer layer of the coffee. And then from there, they will dry the coffee on drying tables. The same day that we harvest the coffee, same day we process. We harvest the coffee. Remember that I mentioned all by hand, one by one, selecting only the one that is red, only the one that is ripe. From November to January, every single day, pick the red, leave the green, and then come back. Pick the red, leave the green, and then come back. Remember with the basket in the front with a belt around the waist. So free hands, you can pick the fruit one by one. After harvest, we mesh the coffee. All well, the harvest will be for around eight hours okay, a day, from six in the morning to around noon or two in the afternoon, okay? Uh, because we need the afternoon to process the coffee. The same day that we harvest the coffee, same day we have to process it. First, we have to pay the workers. They are paid daily. They are paid cash the same day that they harvest, same day they receive the money, okay? In a good day at work, you can make around $40 in a good day, okay? Uh, more or less, you know, depending on the on how, how fast and how much experience they have harvesting. And then, uh, the same day, around three or four, we have to peel the coffee. This way that we process the coffee is called wet milling. In order to get rid of everything, to have the cleanest characteristics of the coffee. Remove the skin with this machine. Then we put the coffee, or we, we uh, leave the coffee in those tanks right there, are gonna be with water for around 12 hours to get rid of the second layer. Remember the mucilage, the slimy part, okay? We leave it for 10-12 uh, hours in water, uh, the sugars will decompose and they will come off naturally from the seeds. The seeds will sink and the sugars will, flow, uh, will float. So on top, we're gonna, we're gonna find the slimy part. We collect all the slimy part, we put it into the plantation, remember, as a fertilizer. Yeah. Then the seeds are gonna be in the bottom of the tank. Uh, with, with buckets or something like that by hand, we are gonna take them to those uh, beds right there. Those are the sun, uh, sun drying beds. Parihuelas, we call in Costa Rica. For around 12 days, uh, approximately 88% of the moisture of the bean is what we have to remove. 
we have to be very specific with the amount of moisture that we remove. Removing too much mo uh, or more than the more than the uh, 88 percent uh, over dry the coffee. The drier it is, the faster it burns during the roasting. So that means that they need some moisture. So, uh, but if we don't dry it enough, they say more than 15 percent of moisture in the bean. Uh, they the, 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 the moisture inside evaporates during the roasting process. As they evaporate, expand the bean. Have you bought whole beans? Yeah. Yes? Did you notice the beans that you had in your hand, they were smaller yeah. than the one that you find in the package of coffees? Okay, it's because they expand during the roasting process. So they expand. If they have too much moisture, moisture, mm. pops the roasted. Actually, instead of roasting, the, the coffee, if they have more than 15% of moisture, instead of roasting, that is called baking. And the flavor of the coffee is completely different. Not really the best, yeah. actually, okay? So that's the reason why we need a specific amount of moisture. And then from there, they don't roast the coffee. They roast the coffee on demand, on the locations, wherever the coffee has been exported to, because if you roast the coffee right away, it will cause it to lose flavor and quality. So Ulysses showed us where they store the coffee inside their warehouse. Uh, these are the sacks that we have left. We don't really have that much, you can see left. Yeah, because we are about actually to start the new season. So all the sacks and those right there, that we have. This is the coffee, you can see. This is the coffee after the whole process, after they have been dry, uh, the peel, wash, dry, okay, this is the way they look like. Looks like they, peanuts. Pretty much like peanuts, and as you can see, they still with the parchment on. Parchment skin, green bean. This is the only little thing that we roast. As you can see, every time you see it, smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? They are bigger, remember that I mentioned, they are bigger because they expand during the roasting process, okay? So they have to we have to roast it, and then the moisture left inside will evaporate exactly and expand the bean. That's the reason why I mentioned they can pop during the roasting process, so they don't look as good as popcorn, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they pop, okay? And also they burn right away. So that's the reason why we cannot allow them to pop in the roast. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Like this, we can keep it for even a year and a half. Like this, with the parchment on. Mm -hmm. To export the coffee or to roast the coffee will be in this stage. In the beans. Yeah. In the bean, without the parchment. Okay, to export or to roast okay. without the parchment. Okay, muy bien. Question? How do you take the parchment off? Machine as well. Okay. Now after the harvest, almost everything is mechanized. Even the harvest can be done by machines. Not in Costa Rica. In Vietnam, Brazil, uh -huh. they use machines. But there is a requirement to work with a machine. That is the topography. Remember the topography of Costa Rica? Yeah. It be flat. So it must be flat. Yeah. Brazil, Vietnam, you can find that characteristic in Zorro. Muy bien. And I really liked how Ulysses would say, Muy bien. What about you, Sayla? Yep. It was pretty cool. <laughs> you said it. Muy bien. Muy bien. Muy bien. Muy bien. Muy bien. Muy bien. <laughs> But they do roast some coffee on site and Ulysses showed us that as well because they have coffee that they serve at their restaurant and some that they sell on site. Uh, Tempo to control room and moisture control at the same time. Are you keep it at 60, what's that? 65 humidity? Um, yeah, that's the temperature. Yeah, that's the humidity. Okay. And cooling it down, okay, after this the coffee is going to be uh, packed and so, okay. The coffee will be here inside spinning all the time. Through this glass we can see the color of the coffee while the coffee is spinning. Sampler, we can smell the coffee, look at the color. When the coffee is ready, we just open this part, all the beans, we fall in this container. This is a cooler, we need to cool the coffee right away. The coffee is still with the temperatures, the coffee is still cooking. So we can burn the coffee even if it is a fire. So it's important to cool the coffee right away. This is a dark roast, okay? So dark roast um, is being approximately 14 minutes in the roaster, okay? It, roasting involves time, temperature, and even curves in the roasting.
Okay, what are curves? Up and down in the temperatures. Okay, uh, approximately 10 minutes for light roast, 12 minutes for medium roast, 15 minutes for dark roast. However, in those 10 minutes for a light roast, you can make a different curve that will provide a different characteristic to that light roast. With example, for example, you can start, you can preheat the roaster to 420 Fahrenheit. Okay, you put the beans, once you put the beans that are outside room temperature, will fall the temperatures inside the roaster, right? Okay, from 420, the temperature will fall to 330. Then go up again to 400, and then we have to control the flame to reduce the temperature to 320. Okay. And then 400, that's a curve. So that light rose will have a specific flavor. But then, same time with a different curve, let's talk about 400, 350, 420, eh, 400, and then eh, let's say 430. Okay. That different curve will make a different flavor in that light roast. That's the reason why not all the coffee in the world taste the same. So the roasting is one of the most important part when we talk about the coffee. So Sayla, what was your favorite part about our tour at Finca Rosa Blanca? Drinking the coffee. Drinking the coffee? Oh yeah, how could I forget about that? After Ulysses gave us the tour, next it was time to do coffee tasting. And for me, this whole experience was just a learning process. I was learning so much about coffee that I had no idea about before. And as we were walking up to the area that we were going to do the tasting in, they had this chart on the wall that had all the different flavors that coffee can have naturally. I had no idea there were so many different types of flavors. And then we sat down at the table for our coffee tasting and then Ulysses was pouring us the different coffee. We had a coffee on our left which was a medium roast and then we had a coffee on our right which was dark roast and then we had the chance to just smell each one and it's so neat how aromatic they are. <laughs> and with their coffees they don't use any blends of anything it's just the coffee itself and uh, it was neat to know that there's, there's no fillers, no other junk and it's just straight certified organic coffee. So which one smelled the best to you, Sayla? The medium roast. I think that was my favorite too. It smelled really good. Next, as he was preparing the water for us, he explained that the hotter the water, especially boiling water, can burn your coffee and cause it to have a burnt flavor. The boiling water burns the coffee. So that's why it makes it more bitter. Extracts as well more burnt particles. Mm -hmm. The hotter the water is, the faster it extracts the burnt particles. So that's the reason why it makes the coffee more bitter. Maybe you heard that sometimes people say the coffee tastes like gas station coffee, like office coffee, like airplane coffee. So what's that kind of coffee? It's coffee that has been sitting for a long time in a place. So reheating and reheating and reheating. So at the end, what you have is burnt coffee. Okay? So uh, that's why we normally recommend around 190 uh, Fahrenheit to uh, brew your coffee. Okay. Pour some water. Next we came to a part that I think you kind of liked it a little bit. You were kind of a little bit unsure of yourself at first, but then it definitely gave you a little smile on your face. Remember when we were learning the fine art of slurping the coffee? Because <laughs> <laughs> we tell you not to do that, yeah. but in order to taste the coffee, you had to do that, right? Yeah. You were a little unsure. You're like, should I, should I do this? But then you did it. <laughs> we're going to we're gonna slurp the coffee as fast as noisily as possible. Okay? I'm gonna go first to show you one example, okay? To show you how uh, this is done. We're gonna slurp it holding your mouth around three seconds to find three flavors, sweetness, bitterness, and acidity. The sweetness you will find it mainly in the tip of your tongue. Acidity on the sides and bitterness in the back of your tongue. The acidity in the coffee, acidity is basically sour. Like a tingle effect in the sides of your mouth you will feel like a salivation in your mouth. So acidity, then the sweetness, and bitterness in the back of your tongue. Okay, like this. Okay, don't swallow it at once. Hold in your mouth, okay? Once again. Very 
Very good. Well, you gotta hold it. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent. Lack of acidity, burn off. Okay. No matter how bitter, no matter how acidic, no matter how sweet your coffee is, the three flavors should be always there. By the way, too much sweetness, that's an additive. There is no coffee in this world that the only thing that you find is sweetness. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, an additive. Which is a possibility. There are coffees that they add sugar during the roasting really? to compensate the yeah. burn beer characteristic. Okay? 15% of the package is going to be sugar. That is called torrefacto, by the way, very important. Okay? It's a coffee that you find in Costa Rica, Guatemala, in many countries. Okay? In many countries you will find it. Uh, and this coffee, as I mentioned, low quality, that is basically burned. We should add it to mask effects. Uh, the way that we store the coffee at home is very important. If we don't store the coffee the right way, so the coffee is one of the biggest absorbent and neutralizer of aromas that we find. Uh, uh, there are even places where they use coffee to clean rooms, for example. Your, or at home, the freezer or your fridge. If you cannot get rid of one aroma, put some coffee beans inside. Yeah, it okay. cleans it. Leave it night long and the next day it's clean. Because I mentioned coffee has the characteristic that absorbs the aromas. So between the two coffees that we were able to taste and try, which one was your favorite, the medium or the dark? The medium. Yeah, medium was my favorite too. I thought it was the most aromatically pleasing as well as the most flavorful. <laughs> I like a medium roast too. <laughs> and then after we were done with our tasting and our tour was completed, next we met up with Lacey and Mike and Josiah back at the restaurant. And uh, we could tell that Josiah looked like he was feeling better. Oh, yeah. But uh, we, were, we were pretty hungry from uh, our tour, burning some calories. So it was lunchtime. And they have a farm to table restaurant at Finca Rosa Blanca. And the food there was delicious. Oh, yeah. First, they started off with serving us freshly baked bread, and it was just yummy. Mm -hmm. As well as some coffee with the bread. And uh, then we ordered our meal. I had a salad kids ordered a chicken sandwich then I tasted the chicken sandwich and I was like I want a chicken sandwich too because the chicken sandwich was just amazing and the salad was good and it had locally grown greens in it but I tasted that chicken sandwich was like I gotta have one of those <laughs> and I got a steak it was scrumptious and it was really really good I have to say one of the best steaks I've ever had so we highly recommend visiting Finca Rosa Blanca for the tour and for the restaurant. And not only that, the restaurant has a gorgeous view. That It's open air and you're just looking out over the mountains as you're sitting there eating or drinking your coffee and it's just a gorgeous view. So after we finished lunch, Micah and Josiah were eager to show us around and see some of the areas around the property that we weren't able to see while we were on the tour. And uh, one of the things that they showed us was the orb weaver spider, right? Is that what mm -hmm. it's called? Look, Daddy, here's a yellow orb weaver. Wow. The golden orb weaver spider. The female was huge and the male was tiny. The female even sometimes eats the male. Wow. And why is it called the golden or weaver spider? Because their webs are yellow. Yeah. Sometimes I feel you're a lot smarter than me. <laughs> They're really knowledgeable about animals and wildlife and uh, it's neat for them to be, see them just it continue to increase their knowledge and share that knowledge. Just like when we were on the tour, you pointed out that there was a, a leaf bug on the tree as well yeah, as uh, I found a frog. Found a frog, and man, you're doing a good job with all your learning. Keep it up. And who knows, you might be on video someday or on some TV channel somewhere being a wildlife tour guide or educator. Educator of some sort. So keep it up. <laughs> so, is this yellow orb weaver spider, is it dangerous? Is it poisonous to us? No, it's only poisonous to bugs. It is? Mm hmm. What else can it do? It can bite you and hurt you. And like it a, will hurt really bad. Like a sting? Yeah. Yeah, but it won't kill you though, right? Yeah, it won't kill you. These guys are really knowledgeable about animals. Oh, there's some thunder. It's almost like every day here in Costa Rica. It starts raining in the afternoon. But this is our first time hearing thunder. But it uh, sounds like it's going to be uh, 
thunderstorm with the rain. The orb weaver spider's web is seven times stronger than steel. Wow, that is super strong. And also around here, there's so many of them. So I'm sure they do play a really beneficial role to reducing and maintaining certain insect populations around here. So it's just really neat seeing this farm. And not too far from the restaurant, they have a greenhouse where they grow a number of things for their restaurant. They're growing, looks like some onions, some scallions, some cabbage, some Swiss chard and even some basil right here check out this basil and they're growing them in these bags here that they're hanging from above uh, looks like it's a really efficient way to maximize their space here in this greenhouse and they're also growing this mint here this looks smells wonderful and then you walk outside the greenhouse and see a number of other neat things such as their vermicompost as well as some rainwater harvest systems that they had and then we even saw some chickens for the eggs that they have for the restaurant. And finally, we were able to look around the hotel rooms and see all that they have to offer because this hotel is really special and it has been featured on National Geographic as one of their unique lodges of the world, as well as the, the Fodder's 100 best hotels of the world so they really have gotten some recognition for how beautiful this hotel is and we were excited to look around and see the rooms and it's just amazing how beautifully decorated it is there And the rooms and the hotel is so gorgeous. Everything just flows together so naturally. And there's artwork everywhere. And even like, like just the furniture is artwork and how it's built in. And every room has a view. And it's just so beautiful. And I, I was just blown away. Yeah, so neat to walk right outside the room and then see this beautiful picturesque background of this the mountains with tropical trees and and plants just arrayed on the mountains it's just absolutely beautiful so i must say we really loved costa rica and enjoyed our time visiting here at finca rosa blanca i don't know guys maybe we should be full-time travel vloggers and uh, show all type of eco-tourist place. I don't know, just had to wait and see if that's something in store for us or not. But we're really into ecotourism, about learning about the environment, the natural environments of various areas around this beautiful planet that we call Earth. And uh, hopefully we'll have more opportunities to, to look around and see other places around the world. So you just have to stay tuned. We only have just a little bit of time left here at Costa Rica, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Then we get back home, back to the homestead, back to work, and there's so many things for us to do then. We have some chicks coming, some ducklings coming, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Well, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time, and as always, Grill on! Adios, amigos! Hasta luego! <laughs> Micah will say it too, here's Micah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>